39-year-old Pete Buttigieg just recently became the first ever openly gay person confirmed to serve in a cabinet-level position as he takes on the role of transportation secretary. The former mayor, former presidential candidate, and former Navy intelligence officer, who's also now the youngest member of President Biden's cabinet, is tasked with overhauling the nation's infrastructure. I sat down with Buttigieg for a candid conversation on his new role, his faith, and his hopes for the future. So I think it's probably pretty neat to be the Secretary of Transportation under a president who has a nickname uh, with Amtrak in it, Amtrak Joe. Uh, it's a good time, I imagine, for your department. Tell me about what you're looking forward to doing. Americans have been expected to settle for less. Our bridges, our roads are crumbling. We're looking at technologies that we've got to get ahead of or they're going to get ahead of us. Uh, think about automated vehicles. Think about electric vehicles. There's so much going on across the transportation space. And uh, this is the moment, I think, to prepare us for the 2020s and really to prepare us for the rest of our lives by getting it right with a one, uh, once in a lifetime historic investment in American infrastructure. I think that there's a lot that we know we can technologically do, uh, but I wonder how much we can realistically do. We can drive a car now that was just plugged into a wall for quite some time, get us to and from work. But a lot of Americans are driving a car that they've owned for years. They're not planning on getting a new one. They, it's too expensive to do so. Really, two things need to happen. First of all, price. We need to make sure that they are priced competitively. And remember, that's not just the sticker price of the car, but thinking about paying less on gas. But it's not just cost. You're not going to want to take long trips in an electric vehicle if you don't know that there are charging stations along the way. It's why the president's commitment to create another half a million charging stations across the country is so important. It's not just does the technology exist, it's how do we make sure it's safe? How do we make sure it's economical? How do we make sure, we make sure that it gets out to people in an equitable way, that we're dealing with the climate implications? The biggest source of greenhouse gases across our economy is actually the transportation sector. But that also means transportation could be the biggest part of the solution. One of the other things that I know that you've spoken about is how the Department of Transportation can intersect with racial justice. Highways were uh, a huge part of the American story, but uh, something terrible happened along the way. And that was uh, often the deliberate use of things like highway developments to cut right through predominantly black and brown neighborhoods, sometimes destroying what had been thriving middle class areas in our cities. We've got a chance to get it right this time. In addition to equity, Buttigieg is also personally highlighting the importance of diversity in government. You are the first openly gay cabinet member. You can tell me a little bit about the significance to you and, and what it feels like to break a barrier. Yeah, you could really feel the history swirling around us when uh, the vice president was swearing me in with, with my husband, Chaston, at, at my side. You know, there have been times in living memory where you couldn't have any job in the federal government if you were gay. And so it's a really encouraging sign about the change that can happen, but also a reminder that we've got a long way to go. In addition to being the first openly gay cabinet member, you also have been very open about your faith, uh, which is not something that we see all the time in politics. Uh, I myself am, am a, a member of the Christian community, and, and I've been confused about the church's messaging on LGBTQ issues. I, I wonder, for you, being in a position of representation for both of those communities, just what you sort of personally feel about the messaging in that way and what you'd like to see as far as clarity. As a citizen, as an individual, uh, as a married gay man and as a believer, I think about this a lot. And you know, sometimes I, I do feel like you have to uh, we have to sort of defend the LGBTQ community within the church. Then again, there are a lot of times when I feel like I'm defending the church in the, the, the LGBTQ community, especially because there are so many people in our community whose experience with faith or experience with religion was one of exclusion and, and one of hurt. And making sure to uh, connect people with a different experience, a more inclusive vision of what faith can mean. Uh, I think that's something that is very much alive uh, in, the in the Christian community and, and more broadly across communities of faith, but only if we talk about it, only if we really explore these issues together. He brings another type of diversity to the role, his age. At 39, he's exactly half that of President Biden. The age that you were as you were going through 
the presidential campaign. I wonder if you ever feel any type of imposter syndrome. Yeah, I think you'd be crazy not to. I mean, uh, you know, when, when you find yourself standing next to people as accomplished as, as the people who ran for president, uh, of course, you, you wonder if, if you're measuring up. Uh, and so knowing that I'm one of the youngest people in a position like this uh, makes me feel kind of pressured to, to bring that voice in, especially on issues like climate. Uh, but, you know, the, the great thing about public service is that uh, you have an opportunity to deliver. And if you do a good job, nobody cares how old you are. Nobody cares if you're gay. Nobody cares uh, about anything in your life uh, so much as whether you're making their lives go better. There's, of course, much talk about what his political future might be. I asked him, so 2024, 2028. His response to me was 2021. That's the year we're in, and that's what I focused on. Very political, but we'll see. It's amazing to see just in two years how he's gone from obscure mayor of you know South Bend, Indiana, to this huge national figure, and now member of the, the cabinet. Absolutely, I know. Quite quite the rise there. So we'll see what happens next. All right.